Today I'm going to talk about complex differentiation. And complex differentiation is defined as follows. dfc dc equals limit delta c goes to zero fz plus delta z minus fc divided by delta c. Yeah? In this case, fc is defined as u x y plus i w x y. Yeah, it's a complex function, obviously with two variables. There's a real part and there's an imaginary part here. And z is defined in the conventional way, x plus i y. And as a consequence, delta c will be defined as delta x plus i delta y. So we differentiate 2z, which is essentially a two-variable type of deal. So you cannot just differentiate like you differentiate conventionally with respect to one variable. This is essentially something with two variables. How do you do that? Yet yeah, there is now a freedom to bring delta z to zero in a variety of ways, not just through straight going to a point, but now you can take all kinds of weird curves towards delta c equals zero. And it better work, otherwise it's an inconsistent definition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's assume that we just gonna say delta x goes to zero and delta y equals zero, first of all. So we're gonna approach this differentiation in this way. We ignore y for now, but we're just gonna see what's gonna happen if I just take delta x going towards zero. Writing that out, we will get limit delta x to zero, yeah, u x plus delta x, comma y, plus i w x plus delta x, comma y, right? <clears throat> Minus u x y, right? Plus i delta x y, that's fc plus delta z minus fc, written out here, for variation in the x direction, and not more, divided by delta x. Yeah? And we can write this out a little bit more. If you look carefully, you will see two definitions of differentiation. There's a differentiation in u with respect to delta x, right? u x plus delta x comma y minus u x y, divided by delta x in the limit delta x going to zero, that's essentially du dx. Yeah, that's what that is. It's du dx. And also, there's an i dw dx. Yeah, written out. So you have a du dx plus i dw dx. If you just look at variations in delta x, you can obviously do something similar for the y direction. Delta y now goes to zero, and delta x in this case is zero. What will be the result? Well, we have a limit, delta y go to zero. We again write it out, u x comma y plus delta y plus i w x y plus delta y, yeah, minus u x y minus uh, plus i w x y divided by delta y yeah and if you look at that you will uh, divide by i delta y of course because delta z equals delta x plus i delta y so if you take delta y to zero you still need to have that i there yeah so what you will get is you again you get a definition u x y plus delta y minus u x y divided by delta y equals d u d y. Yeah, you need to take the one over i with you plus one over i for the second term. And then we get i times d w d y 
dw dy. Again, definition, w x y plus delta y minus minus w x y, yeah, with its i here, over delta y in the limits that delta y goes to zero. Working this out gives you dw dy, right, this one. So this becomes real, and this becomes minus i du dy. Yeah, you multiply top and bottom by i. i squared is minus 1, so you will get minus y. Yeah? So you get du dy. So now we differentiate it with delta y going to 0 and delta x equals 0, or delta x going to 0, delta y equals 0. In order for this differentiation to be consistent, these better be the same. So this one, number one, better be the same as number two here. Yeah, so it better holds that du dx, the real value here, equals dw dy. Yeah, that's the first one that needs to hold. And the second one that needs to hold is dw dy, uh, dw dx, dw dx, there has to be the same as minus d u d y. Yeah? Because if they're not the same, you will differentiate in an inconsistent way. So this needs to hold. And if this holds, you know you can differentiate like you can differentiate with one variable. So let's verify this with an example. And by the way, these are very famous equations. They call they are called the Cauchy-Riemann relations, yeah? Invented or not so much invented, but discovered by uh, Cauchy-Riemann. Two different people, yeah? So let's do an example. Let's say fz equals z squared, yeah? Let's work this out. What does that mean? z equals x plus iy, and it's z squared. So you have two of these terms. You work it out. x squared plus i x y plus i y x minus i squared. Yeah, i times i is minus one. I times y times y is y squared. So we will get x squared minus y squared plus i times two x y. Yeah. So when we look at the definition of what fc is, we can see that u xy equals x squared minus y squared, wxy equals 2xy. Yeah? That's that one, and that's wxy. So let's verify if this actually holds. So let's first do du dx. du dx is 2x. So du dx equals dw dy, that needs to hold. So let's do the left hand side, du dx, that's 2x, yeah. dw dy is also 2x, so that holds. First one is good. Let's check the next one. dw dx has to be the same as minus du dy. Okay, dw dx, that's 2y, equals minus 1 times du dy is minus 2y, so that's 2y, so that also holds. So the conclusion we can draw that this holds, that this function can be, can now be differentiated without impunity. So now you can say, okay, dfz dz indeed is... 2z, yeah, you differentiate this as if it is a one variable function, and the differentiation now holds, it's 2z. And this is allowed only because this holds, yeah, it's an analytical function, essentially. Yeah, so it actually holds, you can do this, there are functions where that doesn't hold, yeah, so if it's not an analytical function. Okay, I think this is a great point uh, to stop. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe to this channel. See you next time.